This episode of Juice TV is an epic celebration of Australia's Indigenous culture. Logan hangs with the crew from the New Knuckle Yagara Aboriginal dancers. Shanae Sutton creates masterpieces before our very eyes. Brittany Lee gets funky with Lucas Proudfoot from Circular Rhythm. And Tarina Blake drops by the hospital to share her story with Josh. Sienna and I'm your host for today and joining me is Lenore. You're the Indigenous Liaison Officer in the hospital. That's right, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the show. This is a very special episode of Juiced because this Friday the 4th of August is National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Children's Day. A day we think that is so important we're celebrating all week. That's right, Sienna. This year's theme will be value our rights, respect our culture, and bring us home. And we'll be honouring that in this episode of Juice TV with some very special guests. And to start things off, we'll be seeing the awesome Yunako Yagara dancers. <laughs> The didgeridoo is one of the oldest instruments in the world. It belongs to one of the oldest cultures in the world. That's because music and dance is a massive part of indigenous culture. Hey, I'm Logan and who doesn't love music and dance? Whether you're just chilling to the vibe or getting in on the action. But dance can be so much more than busting it on the D4. Can you tell us about your band, uh, dance troupe? Yeah, um, we're called Nunaku Yagara, so we're from two tribes. One's from Moreton Bay, just off the coast of Brisbane, and the other one's from here. We've all been dancing for quite a while now, and we teach people around the Brisbane area um, karabas. Why do you and people in your tribe dance? Okay, it's a culture passed down from generation to generation to generation, and song and dance is, is probably one major part of Aboriginal culture. It's, uh, you've got to think, years ago, they didn't have TVs and, and PS4s and computers and Facebook and Xbox, Xbox and that. So we danced about when the sun went down behind the mountains and, and we watched the sun go down, the beauty of the land. And today, uh, you know, it's, it's stories of today that we've got to put into song and dance, like I was saying before, and teach the children. Our children, it's just in, in built in them. It's a heartbeat, you see. When we dance, we do a heartbeat. And the first heartbeat that you ever hear, or the first music that you ever hear is your mother's. And from your mother is where your first music comes. And yeah, from then on, we just keep dancing. I suppose it doesn't matter what culture you are. <laughs> So, is this dance passed down from like generations? Yep, most of the dancers are, and then we've got some that uh, we've created as well. So, see, with, with, with me as a songman, for example, and even the old songmen from the like 1800s before that, 40,000 years ago, their job was to tell the stories of not just a long time ago, but tell the stories of today. So you make songs and dances to teach the children, too. Yeah, just like kindergartens do make new songs and dances schools. And the eagle, he brought that old ancient spear up from the south. And as he flew not low enough, the Gowana could see him. And he snatched the spear out of the eagle's grasp. It's not only the dance itself that tells the story. Why do you paint your bodies and faces to dance? Um, we paint it for different reasons, um, obviously to do our ceremonies and culture, but 
We also do different um, paint-ups for different reasons, like when we go to war, we do a certain um, paint-up which is red and white, just head to toe. And um, all our different paint-ups have different meanings as well. Like, um, for instance, mine is the handprints, which is, in our language, we call marumakara, which is, um, we believe that when we do this paint-up, it's the ancestors pushing our body in the way that they would like us to dance. And all of our different paint-ups have different meanings as well, but um, on the faces as well, the, um, some of us have the three lines down the face, which represents the three ancestors, and um, some also have the line across their nose, which is um, Veronal, the flat trueless paint. There's no better way to truly understand how awesome a dance style can be than to get involved. The music and the instruments are just as important as the dance moves. See? Do you travel often to dance with Australia people? Yes. We, we travel up and down the east coast of Australia. We also travel overseas a lot too. What's your favourite place to travel to and dance and why? My favourite place I've travelled to is probably Malaysia because, yeah, they just love us over there. Uh, my first tour was to Malaysia, so that's probably why. It would be my favourite. Um, first time on a plane out of the country, seeing a new way of life, how they live over there. And why I live, love dancing so much would be just because when you dance, you can just feel it within you. You can feel it through your body, and it's just a good feeling. The NRL All-Stars games, I haven't left the country or anything, but they're my favourite places to go and dance is because like, uh, you're representing your people and uh, showing your culture off to the nation. It's all on TV. Probably Italy, just because of the food, like pizza and stuff. LA and New York, because everything we see on TV is probably got, uh, you know, the buildings in it. was just good to be uh, in amongst it. So I suppose we walked where famous people walked. That was fun. Do you enjoy dancing, you and your friends, like? Love it, love it. We, I'm not really a dancer, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I used to dance and I loved it then. I loved it when I was younger. And just, um, just for the kids too, like, Dancing was my passion from a young young age, and I was told, this is what I was told, it will never put food on the table. And it was something I just wanted to do. I suppose for some it's about games today, but, but my passion was dancing. And today, we, the person that, that told me that, I took them right around the wall. So, so whatever you want to do, you can do, yeah. It's been an awesome day learning, dance and immersing ourselves in incredible culture. Big round of applause for our volunteers. Thanks for sharing some of your culture with us, boys. All right, Lenore, it's time for quick questions. Are you ready to join me? Oh, OK. Let's do it. Smashing hosting duties on this episode is Sienna and Lenore. Sienna is the oldest in her family with two sisters and two brothers and Lenore is the second youngest of 13 kids. My favourite movie is Fern Gully because it's got magic in it. What about you, Lenore? My favourite movie is Tangled because I really like Rapunzel. Good choice. My favourite saying is, that's deadly. Mine too. It means that's awesome. My proudest moment is coming first in all of my races on sports day. That's pretty impressive. Can you tell me a little bit about your, this badge here? I'm the student rep at the Lady Salento School here, and I'm the voice of the students. For example, if I if it, they wanted new equipment in the playground, they'd come to me and I'd see if we can get it. Wow, you must be so proud of yourself. I think that's enough achievements for both of us. If I could invite anyone to my birthday, I would invite Chris Hemsworth, Thor. And I'd invite Taylor Swift, and I'd make her sing the whole time. <laughs> if I could time travel anywhere, I'd go under the sea. What about you, Lenore? I'd like to travel around the world in maybe an hour. <laughs> well done, Lenore. You handle quick questions really well. Thanks, Sienna. I had lots of fun. OK, now it's time to meet our next special guest. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Ayana and we're with Sinead Sutton. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me, Ayana. So tell us about your painting. Well, my painting is called Kelly's Journey, which means butterfly's journey in the Kalkadoon language. And it's pretty much about the butterfly and how she was given the gift of change. So what are you doing here today? Well, today I'm doing a workshop with the kids. I've created the centerpiece of my painting, Callie's Journey, and I'll be getting the children to put their handprints around the outside. And then when it's done, um, I've got some special glasses here as well, and they can have a look through those, and it has a 3D effect, so it's a bit of a special surprise at the end. That's amazing. So how does it work? Well, the warmer colours, like the oranges and reds, they rise up, and then the cooler colours, like blues and greens, they sink down below the canvas. And then it's the black background that gives it the depth. So on this one, it'll actually look like the butterflies are flying. And where do you get your inspiration from? Uh, I'd have to say my Indigenous culture and heritage, and I'd like to share those stories and that culture with the world through my art. Um, I, I also get inspiration from pretty much everything that I see. So Sinead, what is your advice for other young artists? Well, I'd say find your passion and pursue it. Whatever it is that gets you motivated or inspires you, do it every day with passion, and that's what'll separate you from everyone else. And also, when obstacles knock you down, you need to get back up and fight harder to achieve your goals. Because every high, and especially every low, is what will shape you into the person that you'll become. So what obstacles did you face? Well, me as a young artist, I always found it very hard to juggle schoolwork and painting. Um, also, entering competitions um, it sometimes feels really overwhelming, especially with people that have a lot more experience than you. But you don't let that stuff stop you, and you just go ahead and you never know what might happen. When did you find out that you had such an amazing talent? Well, I'd always loved painting and creating stuff when I was a kid. Um, when I was really young, I used to hold drawing classes with all my friends to draw like dragons and unicorns and stuff like that. But I didn't start doing actual painting until I was about 13. Um, I was having some troubles at school, so I was encouraged to enter my first Indigenous art competition. And I didn't expect anything to come of it, but I ended up coming first and that sparked my passion for art. Where do you start when you first create a painting? Well, sometimes I draw it up on a piece of paper, so then I get an idea of where I want things and sort of what colours that I want to use. Um, other times I just go straight for it and go with the flow and see what I end up with. So where else can we see your amazing art? Uh, well, I've actually got a painting hanging at Queensland's Parliament House um, on the reconciliation level. Uh, my artwork is also the design for the Indigenous All-Stars jersey for this year and last year. Um, I've had exhibitions at the Australian Open. Um, I've also had exhibitions in Hong Kong, Tokyo and Singapore. Uh, and pretty much most of my paintings go to Aboriginal art galleries in Sydney. Um, I send them there and they send them all around the world. So where to next? Well, I've actually got my own chocolate line coming out very shortly, which I'm very excited for. Um, it's the first time that Aboriginal art's actually been printed onto chocolate. So it's been done by printing white chocolate onto the dark chocolate and then vice versa for the light chocolates. And then my painting is also going to be the wrapper as well. So that's getting launched very, very shortly and I'm very, very excited. Well, that sounds delicious. Do you get to eat the chocolate? Yes, I do. I actually get a few samples from each piece, so... Very yummy job, actually. <laughs> so, Sinead, thank you so much for being on Juice TV. But before I go, do you mind if I put my handprint on your baby? Yeah, of course. I'd love for you to put your handprint on there. Let's get started. OK. you to be a part of Juice TV. We're always on the lookout for hosts, interviewers, behind the scenes helpers and mini producers. You can be any age, you don't have to have any experience. How much easier could it be? 
To find out the next time we're filming at the hospital, just head to our website, juicedtv.com.au or our Facebook page. For loads of fun to break up your stay in hospital, join the Juice crew. Send us an email at hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to any of the volunteers wearing green shirts throughout the hospital and let them know you want to be involved in the one and only Juice TV. As well as being an awesome co-host, we're going to find out exactly what Lenore does at the hospital. So what is your job? My job is the Indigenous Hospital Liaison Officer and we're here to help Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander families uh, on their patient journey whilst they're here at hospital. So what do you love about your job the most? I like to help people and their families in my community and work towards uh, closing the gap in Indigenous health outcomes. I think that's very important. So where can we find you in the hospital? Well, Sienna, we are located in the Family Resource Centre on level two of the hospital. Anyone is welcome to come and visit us or access our service. Our service is open from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday to Friday. And we just want to let everybody know that our door is always open for anybody to access our service. Well, that's enough about me, Sienna. Whereabouts are your mob from? Well, I'm Waka Waka, Willy Willy and Grand Grand. Excellent. And do you know your totems of your people? Grand Grand is Emu, Willy Willy is Owl and Waka Waka is Scrub Turkey. That's great. What about you? I also have three totems as well. We have the dugong, which we call Dungo, and we have the turtle, which we call the Waru, and the snake, which we call Tabu. Enough about us. Should we meet our next guest? Yeah, and he's a musician and an author, and Brittany Lee is just about to meet him. Hi guys, it's me here, Brittany. Sorry, I was just reading a book. about a wombat, koala and a blue tongue lizard and they play instruments. They also use a magical globe to travel to Hawaii. <laughs> I love how a good book can transport you inside a story. Not only were we in the book, we were with the storyteller too. Hey Lucas. How are you? <laughs> good, how about you? Very good, very good. I'm reading your story right now. Can you tell everybody else what it's about? It's about three Australian friends, a wombat, a koala, and a blue tongue. They're called the Proudfoots, and they discover a magic globe, and they go all around the world. The first place they go to is Hawaii, and that's the title of the book, Shaka Shaka Hawaii, which is the hang loose sign like this one. You got big shaka, you got mini shaka, but they go all around the world, and Hawaii's a, a really fun adventure of playing music and sharing their Australian culture. So, Lucas, where does the inspiration from your book come from? Uh, it comes from my area where I grew up, my hometown, uh, the region down on the Tweed Coast. Uh, culturally, my mum's family's from there, my father's family, but my mum's side is part of the Aboriginal and Islander community down there, Bunjalung region, Midjabul and Kujumbara. We're all saltwater people, and that's where my inspiration comes from. If these characters grow up in a small coastal town on the beach. They're always at the beach, they're always in the river, they're always in the creek, fishing, surfing, and having a good time. So my inspiration comes from my hometown, Tweed Coast. Cool. Why did you decide to become an author? I decided to become an author because I was always writing music, and when I was in grade two, I actually, a long time ago, I, I wrote, I uh, went in a, a children's writing competition at school and I, I won the prize in my class and fast forward a few years I thought well it'd be cool to write a children's book again and uh, and I've done that so it, I guess it's uh, my parents are, are school teachers they are writing and reading so books were always around the house and I think that was a, a natural progression <coughs> for me to do that so yeah that's why I became an author because I love, I love books and I love uh, inspiring writing, little kids. Inspiring little kids to write and have fun. When I magically appeared here, I saw you playing the guitar. What's this all about? Well, that's my job by day. Uh, I play uh, music cultural shows for schools and uh, playing the didgeridoo, clapsticks, drum, but I also play guitar. 
and I've been playing guitar since I was about five and it's a great way to, to connect with, with young kids and, and have fun with music. What we're going to do is, oh, they're loud. We're going to hit them over the top like that. You can go simple style like this, you can go like this, you can go like this, you can go like this. Dunk. No, I don't do that. <laughs> so, Lucas, I saw you having fun during your show. How important is your culture? Ah, uh, very important. Very good question. Uh, it's everything that I do. Uh, my cultural upbringing is, is reflects my live show with the kids. And when I'm out with the kids, I, I encourage them to learn about their cultural roots, where they come from, and um, it gives you a, a really a sense of pride and confidence. And uh, that's what was installed for me from my elders and aunties and uncles in, in my community. And uh, I encourage everyone else to do it, both Indigenous, non-Indigenous, to just get out there, embrace their culture, and, and be proud of where they come from. Want to go fast? I start bouncing the diaper. <laughs> You're a writer and a musician. Do you ever combine the two? I certainly do. Uh, so the book itself is written. Every book will have its own soundtrack, and that's what the Proudfoot has. It's a, each character has their own song, and uh, the title track and whatnot. So. Yeah, the writing of uh, music is very important to, to, the, uh, to the story, so definitely combine the two, big time. Yes, I do. Do. Hey. <laughs> very random, sorry about that. I'll just try one more time. There we go again. Where do we go again? You click on something. Hmm? Magic, 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 magic. Do you like click? Like, yeah. I don't know what it is, could be the frog behind us. I'm not there's nothing there. <laughs> All right, let's try some music and you can try the lyrics. There's no rules, you sing whatever you think that comes into your mind, okay? But just okay. don't like, make me look silly. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So you ready? Here we go. You gotta sing whatever you want. People, music, whatever, whatever. Here we go. We're gonna try this one. Ready? Two, three, go. <laughs> Two, three, go. Frogs jumping around the place. People are going to add a six and frog jumping, jumping, jumping. Frogs jumping, jumping. Frog is jumping, jumping. The frog loves to eat chicken dumpling. That's a chicken hit. dumpling. Number one, iTunes, check it out. Do you have any advice for us before we go? Yeah, for the if, kids? You want, if you want to be a writer, just. Use your imagination, write down everything you, you think is funny, and then you can write a story about that. No rules, just have fun. So as much as I want to hear how this story ends, I just want to stay lost in the book. I'm Brittany Lee, and thanks for watching. Bye! Thanks, Brittany Lee and Lucas. And before we meet our next guest, do you have a favourite sport? Yes, I do. I enjoy watching the NRL and my favourite team is the Brisbane Broncos. What about you? I like the Cowboys. And my favourite player is Jonathan Thurston. So there are all sorts of sports stars, but it takes a certain type of person to become a sports hero. That's right, and we were lucky to have one visit our hospital. To be an incredible athlete on the track, we know it takes speed, skill, and fitness. But only a true champ knows the secrets to being one of the world's best. Hi, I'm Joshua. I love playing sports and I really like soccer. One of my biggest achievements is winning my grand finals in indoor soccer, and we won 10 to 2. And my team is also undefeated in my outdoor soccer competition. Shout out to the under nine Eagles. And while I'm really good at soccer, I'm not the true champ that I mentioned in the dramatic voiceover. That would be the athlete we have visiting the hospital today, Tarita. You can tell she's good, she comes with her own fanfare. Tarita broke the world record for the 800 metres in 2015 when she was just 21 years old. She debuted at the 2012 London Paralympics 
competed in the 100, 200 and 4 by 100 meter relay. When did you get started in athletics? Well, I've always loved athletics. I probably started in primary school around eight. Um, but professionally, I didn't really start Paralympics and, or Paralympic sport until 2010. You faced many challenges. Can you tell us a bit about your journey? Six months before London Paralympics in 2012, I got picked up to compete in um, London to compete in the relay and I went over there with 11 bone fractures and shin splints in my shoes, uh, in my um, feet. So yes, I faced that challenge. I also faced the other challenge because I can't see out of my right eye or the right hand side of the other. Um, to run around the track is quite difficult. So I've had to learn, because I can't have a guide runner, because I run under cerebral palsy, um, to face that challenge of running on my own. What's it like to represent your country? It's an incredible experience, it's amazing. The atmosphere of when you're in the um, stadium, everything, like you're, reading, you're wearing your green and gold uniform, you know. People dream about doing it, but only very few do it. And I'm one of them. What is the proudest moment in your career? Well, that is a question. I would have to say the world record in the 800 metres, competing um, at the Paralympics at 17 and meddling in the 400 at the um, Para World Championships in 2015. What do you think makes a great athlete? I would have to say the determination they put into what they do. Um, their expectations, I think at times, some of them, like I put a lot of pressure on myself, but I've also got to learn how to control that. Um, and the sacrifices we have to make at times, you know, can't go out and have a party, I've got to train tomorrow. So Charita, what advice would you give someone facing their own challenges? I would give them to keep positive, stay focused and believe in yourself and yeah, you can overcome anything. Well, what about you, Josh? Do you have any advice for the kids in hospital? So maybe that so they don't don't feel scared because you might get something that might hurt, but eventually it will heal and then you'll be okay. Well, that's great. Tarita is proof that there is more to being an incredible athlete than just speed. It's the ability to overcome challenges and to inspire others on and off the track. I'm Josh, and remember guys, stay positive, stay determined, and never give up. Bye. I don't think there's any way we can top that. Is there any final message that you'd like to say before we say goodbye? Sure, I'd just like to let everybody know um, it's important to celebrate National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Children's Day and it is important for our children as our children are our future. Yeah, absolutely guys, get involved. And remember, it's on August 4th. My final message is, no matter who you are, take pride in your culture and respect everyone else's. I'm Lenore. And I'm Sienna. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and I'm not the true champ, I... <laughs> What's your favourite dance place and why? Uh, what? <laughs> so, Leon, uh, Lee... <laughs> Hi, I'm... Oh, what the... <laughs> What's your favourite place to dance and... Nearly. <laughs> Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I enjoy watching the NRL, and my favourite team is the Brinko. The Brinko. Remember, guys, it's so easy to be a part of Juice TV. Whether you want to be a host, help us out behind the scenes with filming, or decide what goes into each episode, let us know you want to be involved by sending an email to hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to one of the friendly volunteers throughout the hospital in the green shirts. Also, head to our website and Facebook page for all the updates about what we're filming at the hospital.